we started really thinking hard toward, so 1995 was the gathering of the canoes that came up from Rawatonga right. and from Aotearoa. Mm -hmm. And um, 1996, we thought we really wanted to do something that was indicative, well, looking at the year 2000, the turning of the millennium. Anticipating. Anticipating it. that, we said, now, what would be, have been the, the prime or the, the most, uh, uh, the, something we could display as an, a great accomplishment and achievement of our people? Mm -hmm. And the canoe became the obvious thing. So we thought, okay, this is our time to build a traditional style canoe. Mm -hmm. um, we had come back from an indigenous people's gathering in Aotearoa, a Maori friend and I. And uh, we got, after that, we, we really felt Con confirmed in our hearts that we wanted to build this canoe, 1996. Mm -hmm. uh, it was December of 1996. The traditional way. Yeah. yeah, the traditional way. Right. And we had been building other canoes too, uh, mm -hmm. some smaller ones. But we wanted to bu build one that was big enough for voyaging. Um, and so um, <laughs> we came back and we thought, okay, well, it's a good time to start now. We felt there was time to start and we checked our, our uh, organizations, the bank account, we had $11. Mm -hmm. Cash money, but yeah, on so hand. I said, okay, we're ready to start. Well, mm -hmm. the very next weekend, we find this log lying on the beach. Uh, somebody told us it was a log on Waikani Beach, mm -hmm. and had been lying there for three or four years. Uh, it's a great red cedar log. I actually have a picture of it here. Um, this is the log. It's oh, about three goodness. feet in diameter. Mm -hmm. It's buried halfway in the sand here, but it's about three feet in diameter, thirty-six feet long. And uh, we looked at the log and we said, well, this isn't big enough for a 60-foot canoe. But then our ancestors would have said, it's a start. Sure. You know? yeah. and, uh, and that's what you had. Yeah, right. And with. one of the things right. a lot of Hawaiians and didn't, re didn't realize was that the, the ancient canoes were all pieced together because they needed to build large canoes. And mm -hmm. they, they often didn't have large enough logs. Mm -hmm. So they pieced them together. And they devised ways to sew them together to fit them together, to join logs. And this is incredibly ingenious when you think of, of how they did these. So we thought, well, let's start. So we did. We decided that would be the center part of the keel. Mm -hmm. And um, by faith, we started. Proceeded, proceeded from, from, the from keel, that. Huh? Yeah. We had one piece, and we dragged it up on the beach at Waiholi over here. Mm -hmm. And then um, we, used, we decided we could, this is going to be the center. We need a log for the, for the bow and for the stern. And then to build it up, we used the planks from the original. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. We got, uh, this is a monkey pod log that came from a tree that fell in Heia. Some friends called us and said, come and get it. Mm -hmm. you, you can use it. So we used that. And we use it for the, for the, this is the stern. And then the bow has another piece like it. Um, we joined these three logs together. And it came out to just shy of 60 feet. Mm. By the way, we never use a measuring tape on this. We, no. People ask us how long it is, and we say, this long. All the way <laughs> to the end. From uh, here to there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and uh, then we started putting the ribs in and planking up the sides. And everything lashed. Everything is glued and lashed. Lashed. Yeah, and glued pegged. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So there's, there are no metal parts in it. Mm -hmm no metal pieces. And then as I'll show you what the lashings look like on the inside. Oh, here's some here on the outside. Yes, there are lashings on the outside mm -hmm. here where you see there's three uh, pieces come together mm -hmm. right there. The, the joint, by the way, to join the logs was uh, something that we um, had read about and had heard about. It's in some ancient chants and all that. It's called mm -hmm. a haumi joint. Mm -hmm. And it's actually named after the woman who solved the problem of how to join logs together. I'll be darned. Yeah, so it's named after her. How I've seen some uh, and oh, Mediterranean, Mediterranean time uh, style vessels that incorporate this uh, right. similar type of right. uh, construction. Yeah. So this is the, the lashings on the inside and the ribs. Oh, and fantastic. Now, there are seven ribs in here, and there are uh, 17 seats for paddling stations. And the, each one is named, and each one is named for a particular part of our history, uh, mm -hmm. or a navigational star, or, or a land that was uh, our myth mythical land, not a mythical, but something from our, our lore. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, anyway, there are names throughout this, and names from all over Polynesia. Well, now you mentioned 17 mm -hmm. paddling seats. Yes. So this was a, a 
a paddle-driven canoe, or did it also yes. have a... Uh, well, yes, it, it's a paddle-driven canoe at this stage. Uh, but this is, again, that's another thing about our ancestors, is that, is that their canoes evolved. They developed them, and, they, and they, they, they would tear them down smaller if they needed it smaller, or they'd build them up again bigger if they needed mm. to go. Uh, they put another hull on it, and they go sailing. Then they dismantle it. They'd use one hull go one way, another mm -hmm. hull go the mm -hmm. other way. Mm -hmm. And so you find these legends um, that are very famous of, like, I think the Tainui canoe in, in New Zealand uh, shows up at two different places at the same time. But it's the same canoe. Yeah. But it means that they separated the hulls, and one went one way, and the other went the other way. Amazing. And um, so, uh, so at this stage, it was built for paddling. And, and the first time we took it out, we launched it in September of 2000, in the year 2000. Oh. Um, and uh, we had uh, the initial crew was about 14 paddlers, and we launched it from the beach at Waiholi and paddled it to um, Kualoa, which is, of course, the ancient navigational training grounds. Right. Um, and the reason we chose this area, of course, besides the logs just simply landing there, <laughs> um, these drift logs, uh, we chose that area because of the, uh, that it's very steeped into, in our culture as well as uh, in our history. Mm -hmm. So why Kane is a very important place. Uh, Kualoa was the training place of navigators. Mm -hmm. uh, why Hole, why Kane area was the training uh, grounds for the kahuna mm -hmm. of that area. When you first, first put the, uh, the hull in the water, how did it sit? Did oh. anyone anticipate how it would We how prayed it would a lot, water? Yeah. and it sat beautifully. It sat exactly where we thought it would. Terrific. Yeah. And so we paddled it from uh, over. I d forgot to bring the pictures of the actual ceremony. We went to. Um, Mm -hmm. and we were greeted by uh, uh, six high schools, um, their voyaging programs. Mm -hmm. And they, they, had, they, were, they camped out there for that weekend for this event. Mm -hmm. And then we had a, a formal welcoming uh, and the protocols and all that with the, mm -hmm. with that, uh, with the high school students. So there have literally been hundreds of people who participated in this hands-on, one by one, you know, no big organizational mm. thing. You know. But a community effort. A exactly. community effort, and at the, worldwide, the mm -hmm. people would be driving by along the highway, they would stop and they would look at this, particularly the Native Americans, they mm. would stop and say, they'd look at the wood and say, what kind of wood is that? Yeah. And you say, western red cedar. Mm -hmm. And they go, that's our wood. Right. You know, yeah. that, that's their tapu wood, their, mm -hmm. their kapu mm -hmm. wood, that they use for making their great canoes as well as for their totems. Yeah. So the wood has a lot of spirit in it. And there were two red cedar logs that drifted in. The first one which we found on the beach and another one came drifted in seven months later. Mm -hmm. So the project has been underway for seven years now. And uh, we, after that initial voyage um, and the, the inauguration and the launching of it, then we uh, shifted and we converted it into a sailing canoe. So it's got a, it has a big ama on it, and it, it has a, it's rigged for sailing. Uh, these, this is a car, the carving at the end of it. Called, in, in mm -hmm. New Zealand, it's called a taurapa. Right. Yeah. And uh, let me see if I can find a picture of the rig for sailing. No, I guess right here. I think I saw one earlier you, you about a, one, yeah. what, a Latin sail, was it? A, yes, a exactly, sail? a Latin sail. Right. Yeah. Anyway, it's somewhere in this book. <laughs> yeah. And where it was. Uh, you know, there were some Solomon Island uh, yeah. designs that utilized the mm -hmm. Latin sail. And mm -hmm. then more Quite recently, the, yeah, there it is, and there were some uh, some studies done on the efficiency, and it's a really oh, an yes. efficient uh, sail uh, and design. Amazingly, it's it's uh, not only efficient, but it's not as cumbersome to use. Mm -hmm. We had originally thought we'd we'd need a crew of of uh, twelve, just to wrestle the sail around and mm -hmm. to, to be able to work that. But uh, one day, three of us took it out, and we were able to sixty footer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, it's just shy of sixty feet, I think. Did you have many young people involved in the process? Yes, uh -huh. like I said, those six uh, high schools with their uh, navigation uh, mm -hmm. program uh, called, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. But anyway, um, we had quite a few young people involved. In the construction? In the construction, some mm -hmm. hands-on things, and also in the sailing of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we taught them a few sailing things. And 